Uh, Joel Went here with uh, more of the introductory commentary on the uh, Songs of a True White Brother of the Hopi Prophecy. Uh, this will be the last of these. I want to make one sort of uh, <coughs> slight addition to what I talked about last time with regard to uh, the king and queen of sciences and mathematics and philosophy. Uh, well, I'll go into these matters in detail in future blogs about the, the songs of a true white brother. Uh, it isn't absolutely necessary in all instances that individuals who want to sort of understand what the true white brother brings to the table as regards modern events. Um, would require that people become a master of uh, the material in Steiner's uh, philosophical works and also a master of the things in projective geometry. Uh, a lot of the material I will bring forward uh, is an effort to give a kind of understanding of certain things and it is possible to understand things without having to have knowledge. Uh, this is particularly true with regard to the spiritual. Uh, knowledge of the spiritual is a slightly different thing from an understanding of the spiritual which is like in uh, natural sciences like a theory. They, they teach us their theory, their understanding of the world. Uh, and in uh, a spiritual science we do the same thing. We we will teach an understanding of the world. Um, if you want to have knowledge, you have to deal with the problems connected to the books that I pointed out in the last video, uh, the philosophical books by Rudolf Steiner and the mathematical books. Uh, I also put information out about those because it's important to me that uh, anyone who wants to approach the situation in a critical fashion, that is to sort of argue against the kinds of things I'm saying here, is going to have to deal with those questions because uh, that's where the scientific impulse can be found within the mathematical and the philosophical underpinnings of, of this work. Now in the first uh, introductory material I mentioned a book of my own called American Anthroposophy and by referring to Rudolf Steiner I've also not inadvertently but incidentally refer to the Anthroposophical Society and Movement. I also spoke of um, degrees of skillfulness. Uh, people who come to this in a new way are going to probably take a look at the Anthroposophical Society and Movement and I just want to make it clear that from my point of view there is in general a certain lack of skillfulness within the Society and Movement. They uh, in the 20th century, various things happened within the institutional structure of this uh, society, and even though it uh, wants to have the deepest relationship to the impulses that Rudolf Steiner brought, in a lot of instances they haven't quite been able to develop what needed to be developed. Uh, in fact, you will find, uh, if you get into these things, that within the Anthroposophical Society movement, I'm a member, I'm a member of the society and what's called there in the first class, um, that I am probably one of the strongest critics within the society, uh, the weaknesses of that work. By and large, uh, the society and movement do not understand the problems of bringing forward the uh, principled aspects of science that I've talked about uh, in the previous video. and. <laughs> This, of course, is actually quite an understandable situation because the fact is, is that whenever you have a uh, uh, spiritual movement with a strong teacher at the forefront of it, like Rudolf Steiner, when he crosses over the threshold into the spiritual world, uh, one of the consequences of that is that his followers aren't quite able to keep to the same standards they were when he was present. And this has befallen the Anthroposophical Society and Movement. This isn't to say there isn't a, a 
among individuals within the society and movement a great deal of skillfulness in various kinds of ways, but people will find their uh, dogmatism, belief systems, uh, all kinds of things that aren't necessarily desirable simply because members of the society and movement are human beings uh, and uh, the tasks required of a consciousness that wants to develop in itself the organic and and pure thinking that I talked about yesterday or the last time I made one of these messages in number two and uh, other related questions. Uh, they're going to have a problem. Now let me uh, try to make one sort of final thing clear about skillfulness and mastery and all of those ideas. Um, there is a relationship between the skillfulness of certain practitioners of the deeper aspects of the, uh, the True White Brother work uh, that's similar to the Enlightenment work in the Orient. Um, but because this uh, work takes place in the Occident, it, there's a significant different orientation. In, uh, in the Orient, uh, the development of certain spiritual skills uh, is often related to uh, the, the simultaneous development of a uh, guru, and uh, a guru then becomes a teacher of the process, of the enlightenment process. And the goal of the enlightenment process is different from the processes in the Occident, which have the same level of skillfulness, you might say, but a different orientation because there are significant differences between the Orient and the Occident. You'll find out this stuff in my writing, I just want to point it out here. The general thing you could say is that skillful individuals in the Occident don't become gurus. Uh, their work is about producing um, what might be called a redemption of certain cultural aspects of uh, Western civilization. And this effort at developing this redemption of uh, existing human knowledge in the West then is a different activity than the activity of becoming a teacher of enlightenment. One comes to know through the processes of understanding the mathematic and philosophical underpinnings which I spoke of last time. Uh, the skillfulness is related to what I call living thinking which is a term known within the anthroposophical movement and which I've written about. Uh, that level of skillfulness is similar to the level of skillfulness you would find in a in a Zen master or a Tibetan Lama or a high yogi in the, in the East. In the West it doesn't take that shape. Nobody is going around, like I said in the very first video, I'm not interested in being a spiritual teacher. I do have studies that I've done with respect to these transformations of mind and also with respect to the application of those transformations to particular subjects. I've written about Christianity and politics and anthroposophy out of my own level of skillfulness and you're free to judge that however you want to judge that. Uh, I just wanted to point out here that in the Occident the application of the skillfulness of living thinking is different from the application of the skillfulness of enlightenment as developed in the East. And that's sort of the last bit of these introductory comments. Uh, the next time I'll launch more directly into, in the beginning, uh, the Hopi prophecy and the Hopi oral history to orient ourselves uh, in, the, in this work in the best way possible. Thank you for listening.